how how volatile was the environment around Adelaide Oval once that happened in the third quarter? Yeah, probably the most volatile game I've been a part of without playing, Jared, to be honest. It was it was absolutely packed. And obviously being the port home showdown, there was fifty two thousand people there, so um, it created a lot of great a great spectacle for everyone watching. Um, and being at the ground was even even better. So it was probably the closest to a, a final that we'll get. So it was um, yeah, unbelievable. Obviously, on the other end of the spectrum, not being able to win the game, but uh, yeah, it was a great game. How, how did you feel in the crowd, mate? You probably haven't missed too many games or, or showdowns, but to, to be sitting in the crowd, uh, how did it feel not being out there? Oh, you know what it's like, Louie, when you're um, playing big games, you played in a fair few yourself, but uh, you hate missing them, um, which I didn't like missing, especially showdowns. They're, they're the best game um, being in SA, being at the Adelaide Footy Club, being here in SA. So, um, yeah, mate, it was, it was a great game to watch. We, played, we were unbelievable in the first half, but um, unfortunately we weren't able to stay composed in the second half and, and get the job done. Do you expect tonight to be a lengthy suspension for Dan Houston Tex? Oh, you'd think so. Um, obviously, the, the bump is certainly uh, getting pushed out of our game. And, yeah, but obviously the outcome, Isaac uh, being concussed on the weekend. We, he's on the, on the improve, which is great. The welfare of Isaac's super important. But, um, yeah, I'm sure that it'll take care of itself tonight. Did you feel like Isaac was targeted Tex in a way that was at all untoward? Uh, I think there's been comments that it looked like it was a targeted uh, attack on the weekend. I don't, I don't think teams necessarily target people as such. You always go in, you want to try and limit um, opposition good players. Uh, but, yeah, I suppose you're showing some vision there. They're certainly putting a little bit more heat into Isaac than you usually would, but it's because he's an absolute star of our game. So, like I said earlier, we just want Isaac to... Get back and be healthy uh, because he's a super, super player and he's an even better person. Did you detect a bit of angst from your coach and a bit of tension, obviously, between Matty Nix and Ken Hinckley afterwards? Yeah, it seemed that way, didn't it? I actually haven't um, got to Nixie to see what was spoken about, but, uh, yeah, it didn't look too, uh, too friendly at the end of the game. Tex, we see this um, younger generation, I think, coming in and and baiting the opposition and the opposition supporters and also the celebrations that is, uh, with the Hawthorne boys, a lot has been made. Where, where do you sit on mainly the Josh Rochelle stuff? That's the stuff that's been spoken about uh, this week in the lead-up to the game and certainly post. Where, where do you sit on that? Yeah, look, I think there's a time and place for it, Louis. Um, but as a forward, like I've been through it myself, you, you do get quite emotional and attached to the game. Um, and you just always got to, you've always got to understand how the ball gets to you. It's always something that happens up the field from either the midfielders or defenders. So you can never, ever forget who feeds you in that instance. And I've, I've had to learn a little bit along the way myself. Um, you know, we cry out for people being a bit of having some character in our game. And obviously, Josh was did that during the week. I'd imagine if Josh had his time again, he might have chosen his words a little bit differently. But, um, yeah... We want, we want Josh to continue being him, but we also he needs to understand um, who, who feeds him up the ground. <laughs> the mids. Uh, Toby, you probably don't have anyone in, in this boat at the moment with your side. I'm not too sure if you saw it or not or you've seen what is happening around the league. Do you, do you have a, an opinion on the, the change in players and the way that they conduct themselves? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's TikTok, mate. It's taken over the world. <laughs> um, so that's... that's is it ammunition for you? That's where it Do you comes love from. coming up against an opposition player <laughs> like that? Oh, oh, if 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 I managed to get myself down to D50, I'm sure I'd say something. But it's not too often. Um, but it's uh, it is good for the game. It creates content. You know, it creates talking points. Um, I, I, to be honest, I don't have too much of an issue with it at all. It's just um, you can. Um, it can backfire at times, but it, it ultimately it's good for the game and. Um, and you know, I'm sure the Port supporters would have been giving it back to him pretty, pretty, uh, pretty hardly on, on Saturday night. So that equation, Toby, is, and you have been this player before. Is if you are cheeky, if you do stir the pot, how important is it 
to deliver against that than to walk the walk in the game itself? Oh, well, you always you always want to give your best performance, you know, especially in big games, and and the showdown would have been one of them, and I'm sure there would have been a lot of people talking about it. But yeah, it is. I mean, you don't you don't want to add too much more pressure to to what is already a high pressure game. But um, at the same time, it's sort of for myself, it's more in game than than outside of the game that I'll that if I was going to do something like that. But um, everyone's different, and as I said, I don't really mind. It creates creates something to talk about, and um, I think it is good for the game in the end. Now, Tex, you missed the game through uh, an eye injury over the weekend, if people don't know. How, how's it feeling? And I think in part to that, how, how worried were you with, with what had happened? Yeah, obviously with one of my great mates uh, having to retire because of an eye injury, I was um, quite agitated and quite worried when it occurred. But um, cast our mind forward nearly a week and a half. It's, it's great, Louis. Um, I got ticked off by the specialist today to... Um, return to play um, for the last game of the year up in Sydney. So it's going to be a great challenge for us, trying to knock off the top side um, and finish our year on a high, which is, yeah, obviously hasn't gone to plan um, this year for our footy club, but uh, it would be nice to knock off the top team and have a launch pad in the next year. Can you explain to us quickly what, what happened? You said you'd lost your eyesight for, for a period of time as well. Yeah, well, when I got poked, uh, for those that have been poked in the eye, you can usually open your eye and then close, and then it comes back quite quickly. But when I got poked, I, I couldn't open my eye for a good 20 or 30 minutes, and uh, I was starting to get quite agitated. And obviously, your mind is a strong, strong thing. So I started thinking, um, going to places, what you know, obviously Sloney and, and what he's had to go through. But uh, over over that sort of period of time, it, it started to come back, which was great. I've been a risk agitating you now, Tex. Is Saturday night is the last game of the Crows season, so you'll play. Um, do you know whether you're playing beyond that? Yeah, look, it's with the, we've spoken to the club, um, my management and, and myself, and we've told them that we want to play. So hopefully, um, in the next sort of I don't know five, six, seven days, we'll we'll, uh, we'll have some good news. If they didn't want you to play on, would you expect them to tell you so that you know to take a final bow on Saturday? Um, yeah, the, the dialogue's been quite good. They've been really open and honest with me. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully playing another year, Jared. So you oh, would have just given us an exclusive, I think, Jared. <laughs> Did you pick up on that? So, yeah, so hey? you would have been watching this forward line evolve. Um, and Phil Thorpe's, um, imp- not just his numbers, but his presence, and Fogarty as well. What, what's your place in that, do you reckon, next year? Oh, I think there's still a role for me, Jared. I, I feel like I'm still playing some really good footy. Um, and I think what I can give them on field, uh, the experience and the leadership, certainly will help those guys. But, but at some stage, a uh, footy club needs to move on, and I, I totally understand that. And those boys at some stage will take over that footy, that forward line and um, I can just coast off into the sunset and um, enjoy watching those two boys especially um, run this football club and get them back to where they where we belong. But not yet, Tex, not yet. Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Good man.